This is the Dolly Oberon 3, a bookshelf speaker that was designed to not only be easy to work with, but to also provide you with this big sense of scale from something that has a relatively compact footprint. Now in this video, I'm gonna take a closer look at the Oberon 3, and then I'm gonna tell you all how it actually performs. So yeah, let's roll the intro. <laughs> guys so as always before I talk about the performance I first want to share some information with you all about this speaker so what you're looking at is going to be one of the latest products to enter the Dolly lineup in fact the entire Oberon series is designed to not only offer this high value proposition but to also be a definitive step above the Zenser series now the Oberon 3 is going to be a fairly straightforward speaker it's a two-way rear ported design it retails for 799 US dollars and what we're going to do is we're going to take a closer look here and to start off, it's best to mention that these drivers are actually both designed and made by Dolly. In fact, this is something they've been doing for decades now. And their entire philosophy is based around low mass material because they feel like low mass material is very efficient when it comes to expelling acoustic energy. And there's going to be a lot of dividends to that in terms of speed, dynamics, clarity, all that good stuff. So on top here, we're going to have a 29 millimeter soft dome tweeter. That's a little over an inch for you Americans. And anchored by that is going to be a 7 inch woofer. Now this is going to use a wood pulp fiber material, but I believe they infuse it with a little bit of cellulose if I remember correctly. Now that's actually a pretty big driver for a bookshelf speaker. Some of you are going to notice this text, Danish audiophile loudspeaker industries, just to remind you of who you bought this from. And that of course is what Dolly actually stands for. Now as we turn this around, you're going to notice this veneer now this is actually going to be a vinyl wrap and i know that can be a turnoff for some people but honestly it looks really good so this is going to be the light oak option i like it personally on the back we're going to see our rear ports we're going to have a set of five-way binding posts funnily enough they even designed a binding post for themselves now the speaker itself is going to be made in asia just like well just about everything under a thousand bucks but that's fine the last thing that i want to bring your attention to is going to be the grill this is actually a very nice grill, and I normally don't talk about grills, but I love the material here. And even though it uses the old-fashioned peg system, I noticed they actually use metal pegs here, which means hopefully it'll stand the test of time. But there's going to be more about this grill later. In fact, that leads me to how these speakers actually sound. Okay guys, so to kick off this evaluation, I first want to give you all some context because in my experience, just about everything below Dolly's Epicon line has taken on this house sound. A sound that I would describe as being very spacious, agile, yet a little bit thin and forward sounding. And the big question is, does the Oberon carry on with that tradition? And by and large, I would say, yeah, because when you sit down and you listen to these speakers, a few things are going to become very obvious. Number one, they play with this sense of enthusiasm. They have a very distinct voicing to them that is, quite frankly, very much in line with the Dolly sound. And they also have this very spacious and airy presentation to them as well. But overall, when it comes to the character, I would say that they take on a very distinct V-curve sound. They're on the forward side of neutral. The treble is going to be boosted up, the mid-range is going to be a little bit thin, and the bass is going to be a little bit warm sounding. And overall, I would say that this is going to be a speaker for somebody who says, hey, I want a bookshelf speaker. I want it to lay down this huge soundstage. I want it to be airy and spacious. I want something that's very quick in the mid-range. I want something that has strong bass. And I want a little bit of liveliness in the top end. And most of all, I want something that's very easy to work with. If that's you, then yeah, the Oberon 3 is going to be something you're going to be very interested in. Now what I want to do is I want to break down all the specifics, starting with the treble. And right away, this is where things get very interesting, because if you listen to these speakers without the grills on, the treble is outright aggressive. In fact, if you listen to poor recordings through these speakers without the grills, it can get just downright sibilant sounding. But here's something that's interesting. I noticed that when I put the grills on, they did a great job of taking the edge off the treble. In fact, not only that, but they actually fleshed out the mid-range. Now, it's been a while since I've heard a set of grills that have had that kind of impact on the presentation. In fact, I thought, honestly, I was being a little bit crazy at first until Dolly confirmed that, you know what? This is actually how we voice the speaker, with the grills on. Okay, makes sense. 
So from this point moving forward, I'm going to talk about the sound as if we're listening to them with the grills in place. Now back to the treble. The treble nonetheless is still going to have that lively forward sound to it. It is going to be spacious, it's going to be airy, but I feel like it has the right kind of grit to it. So when you listen to a guitar or a woodwind instrument or brass, there's going to be just that nice sharpness to the sound that's supposed to be there without going too far over the edge, at least with respect to something at this price point. Now moving on, the mid-range is going to be very quick and articulate sounding. The upper mid-range is going to be a little bit thin and it gets gradually warmer as you go down into frequency range. But overall, I would say that, dare I say it, actually the uh, mid-range takes on a very good tone for something at this price point. And then we move on to the bass. It's a seven inch woofer. It does have strong bass. Now, how articulate it's gonna be depends on the kind of gear that you connect it to. I've come to find with gear that exhibits good bass control, especially higher end gear, the bass is very well integrated in with the rest of the presentation and still gonna be strong enough to satisfy most people. But I also found that it just depends on the kind of gear that you connect it to, something I'm gonna to get to later. Now, moving on, let's talk about sound staging because this is probably gonna be one of the speaker's greatest strengths. And it's designed to be faced directly out into the room with no toe in. And when you do that, you get this huge sound stage, but still have really good focus in between that or in between the speakers. Instrument placement is going to be very good. And overall, I don't see too many people complaining about the imaging of the Oberon 3. Moving on, we have dynamics. Now, dynamics are going to be good in the sense that they can handle a lot of power without distortion, but they're not going to be the most nuanced and subtle when it comes to handling micro dynamics. Moving on, we have power handling. Power handling is going to be very good for something at this size. But it's interesting to note that these speakers are pretty average when it comes to power sensitivity, so I'd recommend pairing them with a 40 watt per channel amp or higher to really get the most out of them. But it's also interesting to note that they sound just fine at low listening levels. Now, moving on, let's talk about the overall musical listening experience, because if there's one thing I've noticed, it's that most speakers nowadays sound good with a wide variety of music. I mean, it's such a great time to be an audiophile, but there's something special about the Oberon 3 that I want to mention, which is how they handle classical music, because classical music, in my opinion, is one of the most difficult genres to handle, especially for a budget speaker, because you need wide imaging, you need good image separation, you need good focus, you need something with good power handling, something that can sound good with micro dynamics, dynamics and macro dynamics and you need good tone. I mean, there's just so much that you need. And while the Oberon 3s aren't perfect, I feel like they handle classical music better than anything else that I've experienced under $1,000. So if you're a big fan of classical music and you have a budget of around a thousand bucks, this is actually going to be a very good speaker. Now, overall, yeah, the Oberon 3s are good, but they're not perfect. So let's talk about some of those imperfections now. Okay guys, so before I wrap up this review, there's only gonna be two things that I wanna reinforce. Number one is the fact that these speakers were designed to be experienced with the grills in place. When you take the grills off, the sound can become very aggressive. In fact, if you listen to poor recordings, it is going to be sibilant. Now, whether you like it or not just depends on personal taste, but the good news is if you feel like it's too much of a good thing, you just put the grills on and that should take enough edge off. But what I wanna do is I wanna focus on the bass because this is where another publication named What Hi-Fi had a problem with the Oberon 3s. They said that the bass just wasn't as agile and didn't seem as well integrated with the rest of the presentation when compared to other speakers in the Oberon lineup. Now the problem is I don't have the same reference points because I haven't heard the rest of the Oberon speakers. So this is what I can say though. In my experience, I feel like the bass on the Oberon 3s is actually plenty for most individuals. I think the integration between the bass and the rest of the presentation is very solid, especially on the IOTA VX SA3 integrated amp, and of course the more expensive pieces that I have. But I will say this, when I paired it to the NAD 316B V2, this is where I started to experience what they were talking about because the bass was really strong, but it did kind of take on this slightly bloated character and it did start to draw attention to itself. And it almost emphasized the fact that you're using a seven inch woofer in a pretty thin cabinet. Now, whether or not this is a problem just depends on how picky you are about bass. I think when most people are buying something at this price point, they're not exactly looking for the absolute quickest bass in the world, especially from something this big that uses a seven inch woofer. But nonetheless, it's something that you need to know about. And otherwise, this is a pretty good speaker. And that, of course, leads me to my final thoughts. All right, so overall, I feel like Dolly's done a pretty good job with the Oberon 3. And I say that for a couple reasons. Number one, 
I personally feel like it's the most mature sounding affordable Dolly product that I've heard in quite some time. There are other affordable products like the Zinser series and the Lecter and so on and so forth. I always felt like it was a little rough around the edges and that the mid-range was a little too thin, resulting in a presentation that you're either going to really like or not so much. Whereas with the Oberon 3, I feel like they're now moving in a direction to where they have a lot that people are just going to enjoy. For example, the top end is still lively, but now it's not as rough and as coarse sounding. The mid-range is going to be a little bit more fleshed out. Again, it still has that dolly voicing, but now it's just a little fuller sounding. The bass is going to be strong. You have the wide sound staging. You have the ability to sound good at low volumes and at high volumes. It just checks off a lot of the boxes. Add to that the fact that they're actually pretty easy to work with. In fact, the only real complication seems to be the kind of bass that you're going to get hinges on the kind of gear that you connect it to. But other than that, it's a pretty well-rounded speaker. I was curious to see how it would stack up against the competition because let's face it, this market has become highly competitive. But I think Dolly's done a good job and this is a speaker that will no doubt make a lot of people happy. Anyways, that's just going to be my take on the Oberon 3. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and until next time, peace. All right, so this bonus section goes out to those of you who love comparisons. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the Dolly Oberon 3s to the Klipsch RP600Ms. Now, to be clear, there's going to be no specifications in this video. If you want that information, just click on the description box down below, and I'll have it there for you. Instead, I want to focus strictly on how these compare to one another in terms of raw performance. And the easiest summary is, think of it like comparing an American muscle car to a European sports car. The clips are all about being big and bold and in your face, whereas the dollies, by comparison at least, are going to be more about agility and refinement. So let's go into detail here. When you listen to the Klipsch, you're going to be greeted with a very full presentation. In fact, it is going to sound fuller than the Dollies all throughout the frequency range. And there's going to be this muscular confidence there that the Dollies don't really have. In fact, when you listen to the Klipsch, especially in direct comparison, you're going to notice that the Klipsch projects sound in a way to where it feels like the listening event is taking place a lot closer to your chair. Whereas the Dollies, even though they have this lively sound to them, when you listen to them, it's more like the presentation is limited to the physical plane of the speakers. It's the kind of sound that you kind of more listen into. Now, let's start off with the treble here. When it comes to the treble, even though both speakers are voiced to be on the lively side of neutral, they're going to be very different from one another. The Klipsch is going to have this power to it and really the sense of realism in how it handles dynamics, whereas with the dollies, it doesn't quite have that, but what it does have is just a little bit more nuance, just a little bit more articulation and air around each note. Now, it's also important to note that the Klipsch, they're a horn speaker, and when you compare them side by side, you can start to hear a little bit of that horn coloration or that horn shout. It's not that severe, but you might actually notice it. Now, moving on to the mid-range. The mid-range on the Klipsch speakers is going to be fuller, warmer. It's definitely going to be more authentic in terms of its ability to scale well to real life instruments. Whereas the dollies, that's going to be a little bit more thin. It's going to be quicker, more agile. One could argue that it's a little more tonally accurate on certain types of instruments like guitars, but you know, I wouldn't put my name on that. Now let's move on to the bass. When it comes to the bass, the bass is interesting because the Klipsch overall has a little bit more bass than the dollies, but it's interesting because the dollies are capable of being quicker, tighter, and more tonally accurate. It just depends on the kind of gear that you tether up to the dollies. Now let's talk about imaging because they're very different in this regard as well. The dollies lay down this huge soundstage really good off-axis performance, really good focus in between the speakers, whereas the clips are more about being focused right in between the speakers. That's where the majority of the sound is taking place. Now let's talk about power sensitivity. The clips obviously have the advantage here. It doesn't take as much power to get them loud. With the dollies, you're going to want at least 40 watts per channel and most amplifiers, whereas with the clips, you might even be able to get away with an EL84 tube amp and be able to listen at fairly loud volumes. Now, when it comes to dynamics, neither one of them are really rock stars in the sense that neither one of them handles subtleties as well as other speakers in their class. But still, they're very good with dynamics in terms of being able to handle bursts of energy just fine. And when it comes to the overall music listening experience, both of them can be very pleasing, albeit in different ways. So anyways, guys, that's how these two stack up. Hopefully you found this section useful. As always, thanks for watching. And for real this time, take it easy and peace.